So we can learn some more of the historical facts about the Nanti Massacre from our guests uh, on stage and uh, we are we're going to offer you some time to join us back on the top Toronto and Canada Alpha. Yeah. Let's take a big hop off so we know that I have your attention. Thank you and uh, we have Dr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dong Tao, he's traveling from New Jersey and he is the founder of the New Jersey uh, Alpha. He's from the New Jersey Alpha, okay let's put it that way. <laughs> Current president, okay thank you. And uh, we have a survivor from the Nanking Massacre, uh, Mr. Chu Ye Zhang. Traveling from Japan and other parts of the world because she toured the world to tell people what happened. We'd like to thank her very much, Ms. Tamaki Matsuka. And we also have my uh, co host earlier this evening. She's from Toronto, so if you want to talk to her, it's easy to find her. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Yuko Serrano. Thank you. And uh, Toronto Alpha always love to work with teachers. That is very important in order to tell uh, history to the generations to come. And we're really happy to be joined by a, a teacher and also the department head from the Tepin Peel uh, Region Catholic School Board, as well as the Vice President of the Ontario History Teachers Association, Mr. Charles Glassman. Thank you. And Dr. so thank you very much for staying behind uh, for this uh, um, conference and seminar community forum. Uh, I'm happy to do the moderation because Mr. Chair has already taken his 20 minutes uh, during the video, so I would like to uh, um, begin the um, community forum with the screening of the documentary made by Tamaki, The Tall Memories of Nanjing, and then later on, uh, Tamaki will give you um, uh, her 20 minutes of talk, and I would ask also Charles Laskin an educator and also a very good friend of Alfred who was on the study tour two times uh, in 2005. Uh, Charles, is it 2005? 2004, 2006. And he has been working with Toronto Alpha for many, many years. And I would ask him to speak on uh, how he uh, is bringing this piece of history to classrooms uh, in his school board and also in Ontario. So let us uh, screen the Tom memories of Nanjing. Yeah. 
I would like to speak about how I went about producing this、um, the film、uh, with the PowerPoint. I don't know much about Nanki Massacre because I didn't go to school. 私自身は学校の教師になりまして、そして子どもたちに本当の歴史を教えなきゃいけない、日本の侵略戦争を教えなきゃいけないと言ったときに、日本の教科書では教えられないということを気づきました。I became a teacher, and when I had to teach、uh, history of Japan and history of、uh, invasion of during the war time,、uh, I realized that the Japanese textbook did not write about that history. 私はトロントの先生方のようにまず南京に行って北京や南京に行って日本の侵略戦争のことを学びました。First, like the teachers in Toronto,、uh, some of the teachers in Toronto, I went to Beijing and Nanjing to learn about the、uh, Japanese invasion war. 初めて南京に行ったのが1988年でした。It was in 1988 when I first went to Nanjing. そして聞き取りをしておりましたけれども、えー、実は1997年、南京大虐殺60年の年に、侵略、南京戦,南京戦に参戦した兵士の調査を本格的に実は始めました。And I started collecting some,、uh, some information、uh, in Nanjing, but it was in 1998, after 60 years、uh, after the Nanjing massacre, when I started actually acting. この時ですね、全国、えー、6カ所で南京大虐殺情報ホットラインという電話情報出資を行いました、えー、この中で130件の情報がありましたそして日本軍の集団虐殺が13件寄せられましたこの情報をもとに私は調査を始めたんです So in 1997,、um, I set up this、uh, 南京マスクロードインフォメーションホットライン and in six cities in Japan And、uh, we heard uh, 130 uh, reports, uh, 130 phone calls, and out of that,、uh, 30 of them were directly about the massacre. So, in the case of the massacre, so what do you think about、uh, the rest of、uh, so、the 130 reports? So, out of the 13, that was about the massacre and experience in that.、Uh, what do you think of the rest of that? どうですか半分以上が右翼からの嫌がらせの電話とそれから脅迫電話でした。そして電話情報以外に他の情報として地方の図書館にある、えー、このような本にありますように人命辞典とかそれから。戦記ですね。戦争のことを書いた本を、えー、探しました。そしてその中からその中に書いてある兵士たちを私は実際に、えー、訪ねていきました。So apart from these,、uh, this information collected from the hotline,、uh, I also went to local libraries to look at uh, uh, information such as Seiyu,、uh, that was the reports of the wartime、um, soldiers. And so、uh, I started to locate information about the soldiers who、uh, participated in the Nanjing. I started to go to 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 the Nanjing. Uh, when I visited the soldiers, most of them actually had passed away. And those who are still alive did not want to talk about、uh, their experience because Nanki Mosaka was taboo. So, I was a school teacher, but I was a school teacher. I was a school teacher, and I was a school teacher. I was a school teacher. I was a school teacher. 
期間ですけれども、この調査で250名の南京高齢者の元兵士を取材して記録に残しました。And in over 10 years of research, I collected and interviewed and documented testimonies of over 250 soldiers who participated in the Nanking battle. The soldiers who were shown in the right bottom photo,、um, to visit him,、uh, it took me seven hours long way to go there. では次に、えー、典型的な集団虐殺の例をお話ししましょう。Next, I would like to talk about some typical cases of、uh, the massacre.、えー、この人は、えー、タイピンケタイピンケというところで、えー、捕らえた千三百人の、えー、市民を集めて地雷で吹き飛ばしました。タイピンケ。This veteran. Kameda, who was around the area of Kanking Gate. And so he、um, blew 1,300 civilians with landmines. Although this massacre at Kanking Gate, Kanking Gate, I am in the process of producing a third film、uh, looking at this、uh, massacre. Rikyo Suzuki, 33年代です Next person is Rikyo Suzuki from the 33rd、uh, Regiment, Infantry Regiment. この人は、両相撲の顔にして、何千、何百じゃないですよ、何千もの男、女、子供、撃ち殺しました。Uh, this soldier, he said that around the Yansu River banks, he killed not hundreds but thousands of men, women, and children.
血圧が上がって体が調子が悪くなると言われました。でも多くの人は私が南京大学たちの調査をしていると言いますと協力してくれるようになりました。But a lot of people、uh, supported me when I said that I am investigating the Nanki Massacre. Uh, she 
was in the film, uh, a woman who was raped when she was uh, eight years old. Um, she has uh, PTSD, so every time I see her, uh, she's crying. I ジョーナ、それからジョーガイを三百人の人を調査しました。あらゆるところで日本軍の被害者を見つけました。ああ、そうだ。ここは何件？そう、I the red area, marked in red, is the safety zone. Now, I will tell you about what happened in Japan and what happened in Japan. First, the victim and the victim of the victim of the victim. I would like to speak about what I did with the, after I interviewed all the soldiers and uh, survivors. First, I published Collection of their testimonies. And I also created this uh, DVD libraries uh, with each of the 30 veterans. If you would like to know more about this DVD, so there are 15 of them at the uh, Nanjing uh, Master Museum in Nanjing. Uh, they show every day. ニューヨークの若い人たち、日本の市民に南京大学殺の事実を伝え伝えたいために私は兵士からもらった兵士からいただいた資料、多くの資料を使って南京大学殺パネルでもしました。パネルを作りました。これは約日本の約40箇所の
and these sort of island disputes and a worsening relationship between China and Japan, uh, Korea and Japan. Uh, so when you think about these changes, we have to think about uh, you know, what to do. そして、現在と未来に責任をなくてはならないと思います。つまり歴史認識、一番簡単には歴史認識というものは認めなければならないということです。So, um, we have to uh, we have to learn and acknowledge the history uh, for the future and um, without that we have to, we can't judge the present situation correctly. So we really have to be responsible for recognizing the history. え、私たち日本は対立ではなく、そして全人外交を目指していくことが大切だと思っております。そのために私はこの調査、この映画を制作することを続けていきます。I really believe that it's not the conflict, but more a friendly mutual diplomacy that we have to pursue. And for that, I will continue my work. Um, as my final words, I would like to say that it is us Japanese who really have to uh, know and remember the sufferings and physical and emotional pains that they continue to have. And that's my final words. Thank you. Mr. Abby just showed uh, the he is now the leader of the LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party. Uh, you just saw uh, it was also reported in Japan that his party platform is to turn Japan more conservative, to revise history, to bring back militarism, and also to uh, scrap the Article 9 of the, the Peace Constitution in Japan. He is the same same man. He was the same Prime Minister in 2007 who openly denied the existence of the sexual slavery in the Kung woman. And for that, he went to the United States, he went to Washington and apologized to President Bush at that time. But President Bush wasn't great and she, he wasn't a victim. Why did he apologize to the President of the United States? But that was an apology of expediency, political expediency. Anyway, so I want to thank Kamaki for making such a presentation. And I would allow, uh, like to ask uh, Charles um, about your experience in bringing this history to classroom. I also want to add that Charles Laskin uh, was the teacher who last year organized this school and bring 150 of his students to Ottawa to join us in demonstrating against the Japanese embassy on denial of the comfort women sexual slavery issue. Charles. Uh, thank you Dr. Wong and esteemed guests, friends. Uh, I'm a history teacher and I guess the, the question that we have to pose with regard to the Nanking Massacre is why teach Nanking? I think that if you take a look at the Mexican American historian George Santiana, he said that those who fail to learn the lessons from history are doomed to repeat them. I think that Nanjing is, and Nanking is fraught with controversy, but I think I have to go back to the question. Why teach it? And I think from a Canadian perspective, from an Ontario perspective, the question is, why not? Despite the fact that we receive a lot of opposition. Nanking, like the, the course of the war and the settlement of World War II, is fraught with controversy. Now, who am I to say that we should go on and teach this? Well, I guess from my experience, I've spent the last 35 years either in the teaching profession or the social work profession, I spent the first five and a half years of my adult life dealing with children that were abused and how to rectify the situation and, and yet uh, help them through 
those circumstances, but the ultimate goal was to try to recover the family. And as a social worker, that was our ultimate goal. As a historian, I think that that is something that I tried to bring over the 35 years that I've, I've taught either at Durham University McMaster or in the Duffin Peel Separate School Board. Our goal is to make sure that we have whole students, not fractured students. In the same way we want a whole community, not a fractured community. I think that, you know, when we tell students this, we look at the war and it created so many problems. I look at it because my original experience is from a Holocaust educator. My father, my father-in-law, and many of my relatives uh, were Second World War veterans. I have two cousins buried, one in France and one in Holland uh, because of the Second World War. Uh, so you have to take a look at that circumstance that helps develop the consciousness of, of at least me and, and the number of teachers that, that I've taught over the years. When you take a look at the Potsdam Declaration of, of July 26, 1945, it stated that the Japanese race shall not be enslaved or destroyed as a nation, but stern justice shall be meted out to all war criminals. Like so many historical issues, justice was not needed out. The young people that we deal with frequently face making decisions about a wide range of issues on which there are many different views. Issues like sexuality, religion, bullying, and war can involve complicated emotions and lead to difficult discussions both in and out of the classroom. This is why teachers need to take a mature view of what happened in Nanking. Obviously, with the number of deaths, we take a look at the number of deaths, and I calculated that, uh, because Lincoln is out of the theater right now, that during the American Civil War, which cost Americans 620,000 lives in the course of four years, that was an average of 17 deaths an hour. We take a look at what happened in Nanjing, uh, at the rate of, if we, if we take a conservative look, and students have to take a conservative look, uh, is that in conservative estimate, there was approximately 275 deaths an hour, uh, murders, I should say, uh, and this is something that we have to stress that the victims were murdered. So you can see that they, this will provoke complicated emotions, we know that, and I think that's something that teachers have to be able to face, is the complicated reaction um, that students will have with this, and it leads to difficult discussions, both in and out of the classroom. But as a teacher, as a person that we, when we want to see these students become young adults and move out into the world, we want them to be able to engage in the difficult discussions. And because these difficult discussions help center their moral compass. And I think that's the critical thing. Young people, especially young men, and I want to stress that, young men. And I'll say that again, and I, I spent the whole weekend thinking about this with other teachers. Young men need to develop skills that allow them to come to their own views about and discuss these types of usually important issues. Having the chance to engage in controversial issues in a constructive environment will help young people develop as global citizens and teachers have a key role playing in enabling this development. That is why, uh, since 2004, I've been involved with ALBA. I studied this issue uh, some almost 45 years ago at the University of Calgary, so it's not something that Canadians haven't been uh, aware of. Uh, but I want to go back and stress uh, something about what I said about young men. Uh, today we live in a world that, like what was going on in the Second World War in Europe, and before the Second World War, and certainly in, in Asia, uh, we saw not only narcissistic, chauvinistic, and certainly a very controversial term, a misogynistic, uh, worldview, that women were treated less than men. In some of our societies today, and certainly even in the GTA we see this as well, that women are treated as second-class citizens. And this is something that we see that comes out throughout the course of the war from 1931 to 1945, that women were the first casualties. And so, why do I stress boys? It's because in some cultures that we have in the GTA and throughout the world, it's still a philosophical premise that men are better than women. And as teachers, we can no longer abide by that. I have a writing partner, his name is Tim Tobin, and his mother-in-law is a survivor of Hong Kong. His father-in-law was a survivor of Nanking. 
Now, Mrs. Lynn, when I talked to her about this, in order to deal with what she saw, and she saw many things that she's told me about that are just completely and utterly unimaginable for a young nine-year-old when Hong Kong was captured. Mrs. Lynn, in order to deal with this, believed that the soldiers that she faced in Hong Kong, and certainly the soldiers that her husband faced in Nanking, were young, poor, and ignorant. That was the way that she could deal with what she saw and what had happened to her, and how her family was abused by the occupation. As a historian, and as someone who tries to shape the consciousness of, of students, it's one of the things that I've always disagreed with, but I've never told her that. That the Japanese army certainly were well-trained, incredibly well-disciplined, and certainly not uh, poor either in stature or in, in education. So what would cause someone, an entire nation, to react like that? And that's something that, as a teacher, we have to pry open in order to help students begin to understand that, to ask those really tough questions, to get into those great discussions about not only the what and what evidence there is there, and there is an abundance, but it's the why. Um, I think, you know, in order to conclude, because we could talk and go on forever about this, I think that, you know, by teaching, we encourage young children to stand up for what they think is right. And certainly as adults, we have to encourage them because I think we have a pretty good idea of what is right. Uh, the other thing is that we don't want them to wait for others to tell them what is right. They can join in and make those decisions themselves. By bringing man king into the classroom, we can teach our children to be empathetic, to live in somebody else's shoes. We want them to do that. We want to teach them to be engaged and critical of accepting authority at face value. Think about all of those Japanese soldiers that just accepted the authority. Name Nobody can say that the average Nazi soldier nor a Japanese soldier knew right from wrong. They did. And this is the, the probably the most un, uh, understandable circumstance when we look at both the Holocaust and the occupation of Southeast Asia during the Second World War. So what I said is, by bringing men into the classroom, we teach our children to be empathetic, engaged, and critical of accepting authority at face value. We want to avoid them becoming a bystander, or worse yet, a victimizer. We don't want any more bullies. The outcome is to have them engage in positive social action. To speak up means to speak up for all those that don't have a voice, the living and the dead. And this is our role, this is our goal, both as, as the Vice President of the Ontario History and Social Science Teachers Association and the Chairperson of Duff Peel, as well as the school teacher. Why do we teach about Man King? Well, I think it's obvious. As one Holocaust survivor told me, it's to continue to build a better world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. Trump offer has been very impressed with the cooperation and uh, working relationship with many dedicated educators and teachers. And Charles is one of them. And this evening, we also saw Margaret Wells, who came in to speak a little bit earlier. And many of the teachers and educators in Ontario are working with Trump offer to make sure that the West, the truth in the West, will also learn about World War II in Asia. So don't ever give up hope. Uh, we are working very closely with the educators. And you want to see? So I just want to ask you something. Because I don't talk about that. I think it's for the teachers as well. Right. Um, we have been sending, uh, Charles was talking about the teaching resource guide uh, that was written by John Alpha in 2006. We are coming up with another edition of the Teaching Resource Guide on World War II Asia. We have sent one copy to every school uh, in Ontario back in uh, 2006, and also TESB has 450 books uh, of, of, of our Teaching Resource Guide, as well as the Irish Chance DVD to be distributed to all the high schools. So we have achieved a certain degree of success, but on the other hand, there is a huge uh, challenge that we need to overcome in order to bring it to all the schools, uh, not only in GTA, but across Canada. 
So I would like to open the floor now for questions. Um, since Mr. Chen has already given you a whole presentation during the video, so uh, I would like to now open the floor to any questions that you may have. The person at the back, I'll, I'll bring that up. You can ask in any language. I could uh, in Mandarin, Cantonese, or in English. Uh, my name is Joe Ng. I'm a resident in uh, Toronto. Um, it's obvious for all of us in the audience today that it takes a tremendous amount of courage and a sense of justice to produce such a documentary and to engage in such extensive research, almost meticulously, uh, conducting all these interviews and uh, put them on the film. So, uh, I don't know whether I can speak on behalf of everybody else, but certainly I want to salute Tamaki for her tremendous, incredible courage in doing such a wonderful thing. My only concern is, I know Ms. Tamaki has uh, been talking to many uh, audience and groups, uh, in many places, but even if you fill out an auditorium of this size, tenfolds, hundredfolds, the uh, number of people you reach and who are exposed to this historic documentation is still very limited. So my question is, is it possible to post this documentary on YouTube, for example, or to uh, ask CBC, such as a big organization, CBC or BBC, to, uh, to run this documentary. So you reach a lot, much bigger audience. So I understand that uh, you want to protect the identity of some of these um, Japanese soldiers. Uh, however, I think they've already been exposed through several international film festivals. So I believe they probably already have given their permission to be, uh, to be shown and revealed. However, I think it's extremely important that this kind of documentation uh, be uh, given as wide circulation and exposure as possible, reaching particularly to those who don't have the opportunity to come to these kind of uh, occasions or these kinds of events. And one last thing I want to say is um, there are actually a number of documentary, uh, there are a lot of doc documents that are currently uh, available on YouTube and other uh, platforms, but there are very few that actually have this kind of uh, content, especially the interviewing, uh, interviewing of the Japanese soldiers. They're mostly about victims. So I think this kind of um, thing that would really fill the gap and, and, and add tremendously to the credibility of uh, such a historic uh, documentation. So once again, I want to thank you very much, but I think it's extremely important that uh, this be posted uh, at least on YouTube and gain a much wider audience, for, not for ourselves, this generation, but for generations to come who may not have uh, the same uh, understanding and opportunity to know history. Thank you very much.
、えー、その映像が載った直後に YouTube に日本兵士のその映像の上に偽兵士それから演技者それからまた松岡が仕組んだという誹謗中傷の文字が写真の上にバッとテロップで流れました兵士は非常に元兵士は非常に恐れました And when that media、um, uh, coverage was posted on the YouTube right away、uh, there was all kinds of information in the book、uh, such as uh, uh, fake soldier、um, Again,、um, Matsuoka is,、um, is dropping this, and he was very, very concerned of his safety. そして、言った内容が確かかどうかっていうのを確かめて、確認しに行きました。だから、私が知ってるのは2人ですけども、あと何人調べて、わざわざ匿名のね、調べかかったと調べて、探し出したという、危険があるということを私はいつも考えております。The Japanese right wings,、um, for the safety of the soldiers, I didn't、uh, list their real names. I kept their testimonies anonymous. But still,、uh, the right wing, especially those conservative、uh, scholars, two of them, who、um, or they located two of the soldiers' names and went to verify if actually they testified what was in the book. And I only know two of them, but I don't know if that's, that's the number of them. What, The people who are contacting you.、Uh, for me personally, I mean, it's really scary how pressed from the right wings, but I, I, I know and I'm sort of ready for that. So personally,、um, it's scary, but I don't,、um, I don't change.
responsibility. The German nation has been unable to take responsibility. Someone comment on, on what it might be about Japan as a nation that um, causes that. A question. Are you addressing to Tema? Would you like to try, uh, Charles? I think to that you would be more simple to answer that. Yes, uh, I often think about uh, the uh, compensation during the wartime atrocities. Um, and uh, personally, my father also uh, works in the same area as well in Japan. So uh, we do think about it.
And also, you, I, I, I failed to mention a little bit, but in the case of Germany, it was also the pressure from, uh, from other countries in Europe that sort of made Germany to acknowledge. So in the case of Japan, uh, that uh, pressure was not as strong. え、経済が悪くなると、お客さんする。そして、え、私たち市民や教師を非常に圧迫してきました。だからこの日本のお客さん、え、日本がだんだん右寄りになっていくっていうのは本当に残念ですが、でもでも私たちは少ない人数でも
this this morning at the level of law, CBC has a lengthy interview. Um, Mr. Michael Enright interviewed me for 25 minutes. So for those of you who want to get a link, you could uh, write to Toronto Alpha. It was not only uh, broadcast right across Canada, it was broadcast right across the world. So we think that there are at least uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, who have listened to this morning's uh, Sunday edition of CBC. Uh, I gave a very detailed reasons why Japan behaved like that. A lot of very similar lines suggested by Kamaki and also by Don Tao. So we'll come to the next question, please. My name is Alan Joe. First, I'd like to commend Ms. Kamaki for being here and her message to the world. I'd also like to commend Dr. Wong and Ms. Joe Chong for the fine dedicated work to Alpha. I was born in South China in 1937. One incident I personally experienced was hiding under my bed with my mother while a Japanese officer actually slept in my bed. Luckily, I think this officer was very tired from killing and eating my pain because Almost immediately lying on my bed, he snored and never discovered that my mother and me were hiding under the bed. Actually, actually I have uh, some questions. I've now retired and spent the winter in Florida, fairly near Edgar College in the St. Petersburg area. I quite often go to Edgar College to use the library and talk to the students they are college students. Very few, if any of them, even heard of the Nanjing or Nanjing Massacre. And one or two that heard the name, but no detail as to what actually happened or how many were killed or raped. And my question is, uh, has Mr. Mackey gone to the USA travel and spoke to people in the United States. And are there organizations like Alpha or other organizations in the United States educate their youth to such events and incidents as the Nanking Massacre? Thank you. Japan, there is no organization that works to teach the history of Nanking Massacre. 
unfortunately. But there are about uh, 10 organizations that organize uh, testimony meetings uh, to invite survivors uh, of Nankin and to hold uh, public hearings. Um, and I don't know anything about um, the situation in the states where such an organization exists. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Bong Tao is the president of the NJ New Jersey Alpha, and there are about 15 similar organizations in the states who are working on this issue. Uh, the strongest is New Jersey and also San Francisco. Now, you will also find a few organizations in Canada uh, which are working on, on mobile to nature, bringing this history into classrooms. And Toronto probably is the most successful out of all the others in the world. Well, for very simple reasons, I think we in Toronto have a blessing that you people are very generous to have been giving to uh, Toronto Alpha so that we have the financial resources to work. We have people who have volunteers who are, who are dedicating many, much of their time to work on this issue. But without financial resources, we wouldn't be able to go very, very far. So again, I want to take this opportunity to appeal to you that financial resources is very much needed by Toronto Alpha. We continue to work with uh, teachers and ed educators and, and, and boards. Uh, only those organizations uh, which have the financial resources to work on this issue will be able to succeed. So even if you are not able to join us in terms of uh, spending time, I hope that you are able to uh, contribute your financial resources. And tonight we do have a lot of volunteers and a lot of uh, uh, supporters here. I want to thank you, and the volunteers really would like to thank you as well. Yeah, um, I really want to bring tonight's community forum to an end because uh, it is now uh, 9.15. Uh, we do have a little reception or mingling around after the session. Uh, I want to invite all of you to stay behind, talk to us. Uh, we are going to uh, explain to you our work. And, uh, and Alan Joe is one of those who are who has been very passionate about it. He joined Toronto Alpha's banquet and he has been contributing uh, financially uh, to Toronto Alpha. So for those of you who want to connect with us, who want to volunteer, work together with us, uh, I uh, would like to ask you to talk to many of our volunteers who will be able to take your name, your uh, phone number as well as your email so that we can connect with you. So once again, I want to thank all of you uh, who are present here today and Uh, I want to make a remark, and it's not because I'm here in Toronto, but I say that remark to everywhere I go. Of all the alphas in the world, Toronto Alpha is by far the best alpha. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Don has been most supportive, and he has been sending teachers from New Jersey to go with Toronto Alpha for the study tours. So along the way, we have met a lot of dedicated people. Don, Chen, Kamaki, Charles, and everyone. And we do have a number of uh, Japanese Canadians who work alongside with us. Uh, we would really like to make sure that this issue is not a Chinese issue. This issue is a human issue. This is something that we don't want to see to happen in, to anyone in the future. So, if we only confine it to the Chinese community, we would never be able to go far. Because we are a big human race, we want to work together with a lot of people so that we could bring peace to this world. It's, uh, it has been very basic. We don't know whether we can see uh, everlasting peace in our lifetime, probably not. But on the other hand, if we don't try, we will never succeed. So once again, I want to thank you for your presence, and I want to thank all the speakers, and thank I do realize that we have two more gentlemen to ask questions, maybe you can just ask the question directly.